Hi guys. It is a frosty day. Looks like night, although it's five o'clock in the afternoon here. And the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this frosty midwinter day in mid-November here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York, baby. And uh, time to start, well, a little bit getting back. Well, I guess I'm still boycotting. Is that dog and pony show still going on over there uh, in that resort town being... Uh, funded by uh, being sponsored by Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola saving the planet at a dog and pony show. So anyway, the boycott continues as we slide into, it is Wednesday, it is Wednesday, November 16th, 2022. So you can connect your own dots between uh, today's chronicle of the collapse and that dog and pony show. Uh, this is just part of how the, I guess, the Green New Deal, uh, how you can expect to see it playing out over the next few years and decades, probably in a farm or forest uh, near you. Uh, this is now, it seems like, it's not just digging up the planet to save the planet. It's basically a form of pave the planet to save the planet. As uh, our planet-saving president, Joe Biden, uh, is uh, going to save the planet by paving this country over with solar farms and wind farms and all of the rest of them, uh, I think it was Brother Groot, wasn't it you talking about when you were out here talking about this giant solar farm uh, somewhere out there in California that he says it truly boggles the mind that you have to see these things to understand the scale of destruction inherent in saving the planet. So we're going to get the perspective of Business Insider. Business Insider generally is a promoter of the bright green lies, uh, you know, since it's uh, saving the planet is, is big business in this country, getting ready to get a lot bigger. Take it away. <clears throat> business Insider, fresh off of the presses of Yahoo News today, <coughs> get ready for the Great American Land Rush, <coughs> a mad scramble for space. Well, space meaning space, literal space uh, here on land in the U.S. A mad scramble for space that is going to transform the entire country. So we shall, uh, we shall see, and I can certainly see signs of this right here, uh, around here in New York. The United States of America, home of Purple Mountain Majesties, amber waves of grain, and seas of shining solar farms. Yes, I, and I, I love this next sentence. After decades of denial, foot dragging, and political bickering, the U.S. is finally starting to take meaningful action to tackle the climate crisis. There you go. Uh, there you go. The U.S. is finally starting to take meaningful action to tackle the climate crisis. You heard it right here in Business Insider. Yes, uh, so meaningful action, paving the planet to save the planet. The Biden administration's signature, signature legislative victory, the Inflation Reduction Act, includes $370 billion in subsidies 
otherwise known as bilking the American taxpayer out of $370 billion to finance paving the planet, to save the planet. Some of which, some of which, not counting, what was it, the $351 million literally allocated to paving the planet to save the planet. Uh, so they're not talking in this story about the $351 million in subsidies for asphalt companies to pave the planet, to save the planet. I don't know what they think asphalt is made out of. Uh, I guess they think asphalt is made out of fairy dust. But that is another rant for another day because we're not talking about paving the planet with that $351 million in asphalt subsidies. We're talking about, you know, the green subsidies some of which is to accelerate the adoption of what is called the green grid. The green grid. They're just outdoing themselves coming up with these oxymorons. The very concept of a grid eliminates the word green before it. But it's just like they're, they, they, you know, they're, they're, they're just seeing how much of this horse shit they expect us to swallow. The green grid, get used to that term. An array of solar panels, wind farms, and don't forget those power lines to shift the nation from fossil fuels to renewable energy. Uh-huh. Even consumers are switching their behavior. More people are installing solar panels and buying electric cars. Yes. This monumental move will not only, it will not only reshape how we consume energy, but will change the landscape of the country from expansive solar and wind farms to storage facilities filmed to the brim with batteries. Our crop of green energy technology takes up a whole lot more space to generate the same amount of energy as our older fossil fuel equipment. Yes. This means that a sizable chunk of America's surface area is going to have to be transformed to fulfill our country's ambitious carbon goals and curb the devastating effects of climate change. So, you, you know, for everyone uh, who doesn't live in like West Texas or Eastern New Mexico or, or some godforsaken hellhole like North Dakota or Bakersfield, California. You know, if you're not one of those people and you just, and you're one of these NIMBY people like I am, you, you can, this whole concept of NIMBY, throw that, you, you, you know, you better go from uh, NIMBY to YIMBY. YIMBY, yes, in my backyard. Yimby! Yes, we are going from Nimby to Yimby. We're going to Yimby to save the planet. There, there we go. Green technology is not competing with just itself <laughs> for valuable space. As the population, as the population and the economy continue to grow, <clears throat> America also needs space for more residential buildings, more factories. Well, I think we have a bunch of factories with shutters over them. And don't forget, more farms. More, more, more. 
that raises a question. Do we have enough land to completely reshape our power grid? Based on the best estimates of how much space is needed, it is unlikely that the U.S. is going to run out of space anytime soon. But turning the country totally green, turning the country totally green will require tough choices about where we build this tech and trigger some serious land battles in the process. Yeah, if these sons of bitches think they're putting a damn solar farm or a wind farm, uh, uh, you know, inside of my Airbnb, they're, they're going to have a land battle uh, on their hands. Of course, it's the frackers that uh, we need to be worried about in my neck of the woods. Okay, I guess we're going to look at California. Will we cover 75% of California with green energy tech? To get a sense of just how much land will, will be required to generate all our electricity from renewable resources, it's important to understand just how much electricity Americans use. The efficiency, that is the capacity and speed of the consumption and generation of electricity is generally measured in watts. I'm not going to go through this whole technical definition of this, but the bottom line is the average American household uses about 800 86 kilowatt hours per month, or just over 10 million watt hours per year. That's the average American household. Okay. Compared with traditional power plants, renewable power plants with the same power generating capacity, you, you know, is using uh, coal or gas, take up a lot more land. A 2017 study found that wind farms took up 70 acres per milliwatt, while solar farms required 43 acres per milliwatt, including all the land needed for development power generation, transportation, and storage. This is three and a half to five times the land needed by fossil-fueled power plants, respectively, according to the analysis, and where the fossil fuel counterparts can operate all day long, wind and solar generators can operate between 20 and 35 percent of the time because of the intermittent nature of those energy sources. Wind farms, for instance, take up so much space because the blades of wind turbines are as long as the wings of a Boeing 747 and wind turbines have to be placed far enough apart for their blades to spin, spin without hitting each other. Less land would be needed for power generation if the wind turbines were larger and spun faster. But while a different design would generate more power with less space, it would also kill more birds in the United States, wind turbines are thought to kill more than 500,000 birds every year. Restrictions have been imposed on the height and speed of the turbines to lower the risk of bird deaths. Kill a bird to save the planet. There you go. It's too bad they can't figure out a way. Why don't we just burn the dead birds for biomass? 
uh, hell with, uh, you know, the wind, just burn all those dead. I mean, 500,000 dead birds. Good Lord. Uh, how many American homes could we power with burning dead songbirds? <clears throat> Given these existing technological limitations and regulations, the aggregate de demand for land to power our future green economy is huge. Suppose the annual electricity demand in the U.S. remains, remains, okay, meaning it doesn't keep going up. It remains right where it is at about 4 billion milliwatt hours in 2050, and the land requirement per milliwatt does not decline, we would need 120,000 square miles, otherwise known as 77 million acres, 77 million acres of land to install all the wind and solar facilities for the renewable energy transition. This is equivalent to the area of three quarters of California or two Floridas. So they're, they're talking, so picture that, Florida, take the state of Florida and double the state of Florida. This is how much uh, according to these dreamers, uh, that they're talking about paving over with wind farms and solar farms. Twice the area of Florida. Sounds pretty damn clean, green, environmentally friendly to me. Is there anybody on this planet, the more you figure out what this game is all about, this is uh, not. This is not even talking about the, the increase in mining from uh, three to ten times between now and 2050. They're talking about covering an area twice the size of the state of Florida, and this is if if electricity demand stays stagnant where it is today. And, and this is this is based on today's like the the demand in the year 2050 is, is going to be where it is today. It, it, it ain't gonna happen, people. It, it, this is it, this whole thing. It, it, this whole thing is, is, is the, the it's a money making. It's a it's not just a land grab. It's a money grab and uh, $370 billion of taxpayers' money. Uh, when you're filling out your IRS check, uh, that money is going to one of these giant uh, solar and wind energy corporations. Out with the old boss, in with the new boss. Uh, anyway, 77 million acres but as the number, the number of Americans grows and the country shifts more of its energy focus to renewable, to renewable sources, there is good reason to think the need for land will also grow. So it's probably, we're probably talking three Floridas or an entire California. Uh, this, is, this is crazy shit, people. Uh, electricity demand is bound to rise significantly because, take a wild guess, why would the demand for electricity, meaning the demand for paving a third Florida, what do you think is the number one reason for the rise in the demand of electricity? This is a no-brainer, people. All right. Uh, okay. Because of the electrification of the transport 
transportation sector, meaning you have to charge up all of these electric cars and also the electrification of home heating. A 2021 estimate by Bloomberg using data from researchers at Princeton University suggested that in the most extreme scenario, one where our country gets almost all of its and all of its new energy from solar or wind power, the U.S. would actually need to use as much as 200. 67 million acres of land to complete its green energy transition. That area is nearly two and a half times the size of California or about one and a half times the size of Texas. Under the least, under the least land intensive scenario, the U.S. would still need to devote an area nearly the size of two North Carolinas, about 63 million acres, to wind and solar power to achieve our green power goals. Enter the Great American Land Rush. Obviously, we will not cover the vast majority of California with wind tor turbines or blanket Florida with solar panels. But to make the switch over to green energy and save the planet, American consumers and businesses are going to have to make some trade-offs from NIMBY to YIMBY. The lower 40 states, 48 states have a land area of 1.9 billion acres, some 2.9 million square miles. So even if in the scenario, even in the scenarios outlined above, energy use would make up 3% to 14% of the total land available. So somewhere at the, the, the quote best case scenario is 3% of the land in the U.S. The worst case scenario, 14% of the, just the actual acreage in the United States will be going to uh, green energy. I don't know if they're including all of the land for all of these, uh, you know, giant power lines, the thousands and thousands of thousands of miles of new uh, power lines that, that are, I don't know if that's even factored in here. But as with any new project, a company can't just slap down a new solar plant or wind farm anywhere at once. Yeah, like hell it can't. <coughs> For one thing, these sorts of projects require a specific type of land to be cost efficient and useful. Ideal locations for green power plants should be, you know, no shit, in a sunny or windy place on cheap land close to the final electricity consumers. But there's one crucial problem. A lot of people want that sort of land. This means green power generators have a delicate balancing act, seeking locations that have plenty of power generation potential and are close to urban consumers, but far enough away that land costs were lower. Yes, from 2010 to 2020, the U.S.'s total wind energy capacity increased from 39,000 milliwatts to 119,000. These new wind farms are primarily added to the South and the Midwest, parts of the country that have the right weather and the right land price. Texas and the Midwest now jointly account for roughly two-thirds 
of our country's wind capacity, but a full energy, a full green energy transition requires a more even distribution of renewables. And with the U.S. projected to add 79 million residents by 2060, you know, there's still this myth out here that the, the declining birth rate in the U.S., people think that the U.S.'s birth population is going to go down with the U.S. projected to add 79 million new residents by 2060, the demand for urban and suburban housing will further increase. While the amount of urban land is a relatively small slice of the overall pile, pie clocking in at just over 3.6 of our total land use, uh, it is also the fastest growing with the U.S. adding roughly 1 million acres of it per year. At current rates, the amount of newly converted urban space would equal the land area of Virginia by 2050, and projections from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and EPA have suggested the shift to urban land could be even more drastic with as much as 8% of the country's land turning into urban sprawl by 2050, that being as a shift of roughly 96 million acres, which the USDA notes is larger than the state of Montana. <coughs> and this increase in urban space to the maximum <coughs> potential area needed for green energy and add that and as much as 300 63 million acres may be transformed over the next 30 years, a little more than double the land area of the state of Texas. Cities are already complaining about a lack of developable land and areas that were once exurban or even rural might be turned into prime real estate as cities expand, rising land prices in these areas would further constrain the location options for green energy generators. The installation of large-scale wind and solar capacity would also entail an extensive conversion of rural farmland. Data from the USDA indicates that in 2012, over 50% of land was used by the agricultural sector, and the cost of that land is soaring. The average value per acre of cropland has grown to $5,050 from $2,760 per acre in 2008 an 84% increase, while the value per acre of pasture land has increased by over 50%. This increase in agricultural land, you know, food growing land value, has led some of the country's wealthiest people, such as Bill Gates, to gobble up vast swaths of farmland is part of their investing strategies. This fight for land has pitted farmers against investors and in green energy suppliers, but it has also led to soaring values for some of the most desirable plots of farmland. As R.J. Jolly, a farmer in Cheyenne County, Colorado, said, Quote, it's a big land rush. Everybody is jockeying to get into position. There is a lot of money on the table. Do you think so? 
and the political battle over land will only get fiercer as green energy capacity increases. Local residents are often annoyed by wind turbines making loud noises and solar panels making their neighborhoods less pretty. Consider California. The state has many locations where green power could be cited, but it also sports a median home price of $750,000 and is famous for NIMBY lawsuits, even going so far as to block renewable energy projects in the name of conservation. The world's largest solar power plant is in California's Mojave Desert, but expansion of that plant has been met with opposition from environmentalists. In other parts of the country, conversions of farmland you know, to solar and wind farms have triggered local backlash, and several states have now introduced bills to limit the ability of green power producers to convert farmland. An, an analysis by the researchers at Columbia University found that local governments in 31 states had passed bills limiting the creation of renewable energy projects. These legal restrictions on how land can be used has boxed out some of these projects or made them much more expensive than they otherwise need to be. So now, of course, what are the potential solutions? Mm. This competition for scarce land will cause new local land use battles, but there are some ways to alleviate the strain of this great American land rush. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and bore you with zoning, using zoning laws. How about making farmland more efficient per acre, such as using seeds developed through CRISPR, ed CRISPR gene editing techniques? The need for farmland would decline. Yes. And then, of course, we can just stop eating meat and they'll just put these uh, things on pasture land. Uh, and then, of course, put farmers to work for the green energy people. There you go. Uh, just get the farmers farming solar panels. Yes. The potential increase in quality of life can sway rural Americans into supporting green electric electricity projects. Yes, here we go. The federal government also controls huge swaths of land that, can you say, our public lands what they're talking about, BLM and U.S. Forest Service land. The federal government, meaning the American public, yeah, right, also controls vast swaths of land that could be used for green power generation, which is exactly what is going to happen, is that all of this crap uh, about reducing uh, you know, oil and gas drilling on our federal lands, there's going to be a hell of a lot more of our public lands uh, getting bulldozed uh, for, for these goddamn uh, solar farms and wind farms uh, than ever have been affected by oil and gas drilling. You, you can take this to the bank. Okay, the, the, uh, the environmental devastation uh, getting ready to be unleashed uh, on our public lands by, the, by this bullshit bright green lie. It, it's going to completely dwarf 
the carnage uh, to our public lands by the oil and gas industry. Completely dwarf it. All right. Is there anybody who doesn't get it? Uh, what what the game uh, is here, guys? Y you know. And don't forget, new public-private partnerships could help private investors confidently invest in solar panels and wind turbines on plots of government-owned land, meaning what we're going to be doing is handing over millions and millions and millions of acres of our public lands to these giant multinational, multi-billion dollar energy corporations. Uh, I, I remember, a, good Lord, it must have been 30 years ago when I was very first hearing about uh, solar and wind energy and, and, and uh, just immediately saying, we're going to see solar energy catch on when these energy companies uh, can figure out how to make more money selling us sunlight than selling us oil. It took me five minutes to come up with this brilliant idea uh, 40 years ago. And, and here it is, exactly what I predicted coming true. But even with these options, America's ambitious climate goals and continued growth, meaning population and economic growth, are going to cause some serious real estate battles. As Mark Twain wrote more than a century ago, century ago quote, by land, they are not making it anymore. Thank you, Mark Twain. And uh, I have always, I mean, you all guys all know that I made my money as a real estate investor. So who are the authors of this? Matthew Kahn is the provost professor of economics at the University of Southern California. Robert Huang is a junior at the University of Southern California College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Anyway, guys, uh, read it and weep. Uh, pave the planet to save the planet. And if you want to make money off the collapse of a planet in the 21st century, Follow the words, advice of Mark Twain and Bill Gates. Buy land. They are not making any more of it. Get out there and enjoy your public lands while you still can before your favorite camping spot gets covered with a goddamn solar farm. Is this a tick on you? Good lord, dog. What are you doing? It's weird. I have pulled more ticks off this dog since it got cold than I did all summer. Good lord, gross. Ugh. Look at that. Disgusting. Three inches of snow on the goddamn ground, and I'm pulling ticks off my dog who sleeps in the same bed with me. I'll have to do a rant about ticks sometime. Bye, guys.